Now we're slowly working our way through a lot of the concepts that were introduced in that very first lesson when we talked about physics and energy and chemistry and energy and trying to get the two to work together. Now there's a big problem in physics when you adapt, adapt it to chemistry and it's this kinetic and potential energy. So going back to physics, kinetic energy is associated with motion. So typically uh, a big object is moving somewhere and there's a formula for it. Potential energy is energy due to position or something being bent out of shape. And there's a formula for it. Now in chemistry, we're dealing with heat, which we now know is a form of energy, but how can it be kinetic or potential energy? Well, let's see if we can explain. We're going to start with kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is associated with motion. And there's no obvious motion when you're looking at a chemical reaction. But it's there. It's at a microscopic level. So kinetic energy is energy associated with the movement of atoms or molecules, tiny particles. Which you can't see. You can see the effects of them. You can see things like diffusion. You can see a chemical reaction occurring. But you actually can't see the little guys moving. They're too small. And this is measured indirectly by temperature. It took them a long time to figure out what they were measuring when they measured temperature. They had the, the measurement before they really understood what they were doing. So do you remember that formula? You better remember it, mc delta t. Oh, q, because it involves a temperature change, is a change in kinetic energy. Qs are kinetic energy in chemistry. So anytime you have a temperature change, something's gaining or losing energy through a temperature change, that's kinetic energy in chemistry. All right. So what about this potential energy business? That's even a little trickier. Except if you go back to the idea of a bow and arrow. If you have a bow, it's in a rest position. That's its lowest energy state. You can add energy by bending it out of its rest position. Pull the string back. And as long as you apply that force to hold it back there, you're storing that energy. Hmm. How does that work in chemistry? Bonds. Aha. Forces in bonds. This is energy associated with bonds. Now, in chemistry, there are a lot of different bonds. All right, let's see if we can review them. With There are intramolecular bonds. Intra means inside. And inside molecules, there are two types of bonds. There are ionic and covalent. So remember all that stuff in Chem 20 when you were figuring out how ions form compounds, forming ionic bonds, those are ionic bonds, and covalent, that's when you had those dot diagrams and you were getting the electrons to form pairs. Yeah, you were actually doing intramolecular bonds. Okay, and that's actually the most important type of potential energy. But there's another one. It's a little bit less important, but you should know about it. 
and there are intermolecular bonds. Inter means between, between molecules, so on the outside of molecules. Let's see. If you've taken Chem 20, you might remember these things called hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole interaction. I am not going to write that out. <laughs> And the weakest of all, um, London forces, which have nothing to do with the city of London. So these are the forces that determine you know, if a liquid sticks together or not. Um, they determine states of matter, solid, liquid, gas. And they determine that at what temperature they change from one to the other. Uh, we're not going to look a lot at intermolecular bonds in this course, but they're there. So these are considered to be um, potential energy. So a huge amount of energy is stored within bonds in a molecule and a smaller but still large amount of energy by the bonds between the molecules. Now, Kinetic energy is Q, associated with temperature change. Potential energy, well, we generally call it delta H. Those delta H's we've been dealing with, with um, molar enthalpies of combustion, those are potential energy. So the fuel has all this energy stored in it, stored in the bonds. In a chemical reaction, you break the bonds and you form new ones. And the combination of these two acts usually releases a large amount of energy. Now, there are cases where it doesn't release. It takes it in. But for now, that's how kinetic and potential energy fits into chemistry.